Hello, hello, and welcome to the joy of connection. I've got Tina Turner in my head. What's love got to do with it going on and on and on? Because I had the pleasure of seeing the play last night. So I'm still sort of, you know, getting my moves in and thinking about all the great stuff that I saw uh, or heard, I should say, because some of it wasn't so great to see. But tonight, I wanted to talk about our, our theme, which is going to be great because last week, those of you that tuned in and those of you that didn't may or may not know that we talked about menopause. And last week, we sort of talked from the perspective of what it was like having menopause in the workplace, how people were managing with that, what were some of the symptoms, how people are feeling. And we, we touched on perimenopause and menopause. And, you know, we've got some great feedback and, and people telling us what they, they thought. So as an add-on, I decided, you know what, it'd be great to have somebody who could talk to us from the perspective of the products that we should be using and not over-the-counter products, not drugs in the sense of what the doctor says that you should use, as in GP, because we know that, you know, they sort of tend to give you the standard HRT, et cetera but more from a herbalist perspective, a natural medicinal perspective. What, what can we do that is natural, that would work nicely with our bodies and, and be in tune with us as opposed to taking a drug? So today I have the pleasure of bringing Coco Raz onto the, onto the show to tell us more about what we need to know. So let's, let's bring her on. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Coco. Welcome. How are you? I'm fine. And yourself? Great, great. And you know what? I am so grateful that you could join us tonight because I know you're busy. You've had your own your own things going on as well. You've been, yes. You know, as we all do, and uh, yeah. we're making the time out. It's really appreciated, and, awesome. and it's great to have you here. So, to be here. thank you. So my first question that I'd like to ask you, which I always say to most of my guests, can you tell our audience, because our audience is, is, is widespread. So I have people from the States, I have people from Europe, I have somebody regularly checks in from Denmark as well, and um, UK, of course. So could you tell people where you're from and where you live? Okay, I'm from UK, the UK, born in Wolverhampton, now live in Birmingham. Okay, and for those of you who are not from England, she has a Wolverhampton accent. Okay? I do. Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so just so you know, that's, that's what we're doing here. That's so wonderful. And so tell me, do you, do you remember how we connected? Because this show is about the joy of connection. Yeah, um, I think um, a lady called Angela told you about me. Um, yeah, I helped her some years ago with a health issue. And since then, she just tells the world about me so thank you Angela <laughs> <laughs> she should be on listening so hopefully that that will be there but do you know what I have to say um I'd asked her about just somebody in general you know who would be great for my show and she mentioned your name and then I spoke to somebody else and they were like oh my god Coco she's amazing you've got to have her on the show and then somebody else then somebody else so I was like okay if one person says you're good it's one thing two people say it but three four five yeah you're doing something amazing right. thank, thank you, you. Oh. <laughs> your, your good work so that's so good to hear so before we go on to the, the topic and I've got so many great questions to ask you but I wanted to get to know you a little bit so okay. can you tell us a little bit about what you do for yourself in terms of self-love and self-care because myself I'm a relationship coach right I do is talk to people about the relationship with themselves and then with others. And one of the things I'm always harping on about is, you know, what are you doing for your self-love and your self-care? So tell me, what does Coco do for Coco? Right. Okay. So basically, um, I'm actually in, a, I'm doing a hundred day mm -hmm. detox at the moment. Okay. Um, and that's um, actually to do with wound wellness. And I've created a group because I, I fast every month anyway. And as you said, we, we as especially females, we're always looking after others and we forget about ourselves. Absolutely. You know, so I decided, you know what, I, that's what I'm doing. I'm always looking after others. It's time to look after myself now. And then I created a, um, a wound wellness detox group via WhatsApp. 
and teaching obviously myself and other ladies how to do self-care so basically we're um we're meditating a lot we're um, doing clay packs yoni packs um we're, we're discussing our feelings we're eating correctly eating in rhythm it's it's just a big big journey and it's so beautiful you know um it's we're 25 days into it now and the females, including myself, have seen a massive change in just doing those little things. Also incorporating yoga, which obviously balances mind, body and soul as well. So that's what we're doing at the moment. Well, listen, you've just opened Pandora's box. You know, there's a whole <laughs> lot of great, juicy information right there. Yeah. Let's just start with, and I didn't know about this, so this is really great. Yeah. Let's start with, what does the term womb wellness mean? That the many people that may have heard it around, but I know it's a new concept to me, new in the last couple of years, but some people may not know what that is. What does that really mean? The womb wellness, it's right. When we're talking about womb wellness, we're not just talking about all oh, the foods that we eat. You know, it's every, all of our memories, every bad thing that you've gone through, every good thing you've gone through is basically down there. It's, it's stored within your yoni center, within your womb. And, um, what we have noticed since we've been meditating a lot more, I, um, I was the first person to um, share my experience of this deep meditation because we was doing some womb meditating. And things that I thought I forgot about years and years ago, I was just crying, 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 you know, and the memory of it. And I was thinking, well, how come that's bothering me now? It's because it's stored down there and we need to, and that's the part we need to heal. We need to heal those memories. We need to heal um, those traumatic events that we've been through, you know? So mm -hmm. that's, that's what wound wellness is. It's not just about eating correctly. It's about healing those memories. It's about, um, you know, um, doing clay packs, which we uh, mix clay with water and put over the wound um, center to release all the traumatic um, experiences, all the bad foods that we're eating that affect the wound. You know, and um, castor oil packs as well is really, really good for that too. Yeah. Wow. And so in terms of womb wellness, are we talking about, doesn't matter what stage you're in, whether you're still menstruating, whether you're... It doesn't matter whether you've had, okay, then whether you've um, still menstruating, whether you've gone through menopause, whether you've had hysterectomies. It's still very, very important. Your memories are still stored there. And what we call, you still have um, something called the energy womb. Even though it's been removed, there's something still there, you know, so. Oh, that's yeah. so fascinating. Yeah. So you're saying you're 25 days in. So 25 how long do you do it normally? How long, is Pardon? how long do you do it for? Um, I'm doing, this one is going to be my longest one. I'm doing this for 100 days. Because it actually it takes actually ninety days to heal from any issue. I just want to do a bit extra, you know. So mm -hmm. my, my life is like a big detox. I'm always doing some sort of detox. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I've decided to do the hundred days. Yeah. Before we move forward, because I've got a few questions for you. We've got a few ladies coming in and saying hi to you. So hi. Welcome. <laughs> the audience is saying hi. Um, so you just brought up a really interesting fact. It takes 90 days to heal something. So if you're taking vitamins, 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 English, vitamins, if you're taking vitamins, oh. if, you're, um, if you're starting anything, you're saying it takes about 90 days for it to really 90 days, and that's minimum. That's actually minimum, minimum. that you're supposed to do, okay. you know, so. So if you, I know one thing that's um, I've been struggling with, my hair's thinning. And I don't yeah. know if it's post-menopause, I don't know if it's hair, I, you know, I, it could be a combination. Um, if I was given something to use, I shouldn't expect to see any changes. No. Today. It's before 90 days. Correct. Correct. And, <laughs> hair is even, and hair is actually even longer. Um, for you to grow back your hair, if you've got thinning edgings, that, that could even take six months or even longer to be honest yeah that's good to know because i'm one of these people i'm like you know i've been using this for six days and i haven't seen anything yet issue that is a big issue with people i mean i have consultations um practically weekly yeah with um a lot of people whether it's man female um for different issues 
and that the, they get excited when you know I'm speaking you know and then two weeks into their their program you don't hear from them again because they expect you know the, the miracles and there is no such thing you know you've got to remain consistent to get the results that you want it's that simple really good to know that's really good to know and um, Eva and our audience just said, this is very true. It takes 90 days to change a paradigm. And that's so, so good to share with us, Eva. Thank you so much. So this is really fascinating. Wow. I know, I know that we're supposed to be talking about menopause, et cetera, but mm -hmm. just give me some juicy bits. So when you say, did you say you do a yogi pack as well? Yoni pack. It's, it's actually Yoni. called the pen Yoni. It's actually called the panache pack that's what it's called the panache oh, I like <laughs> it was actually a, a customer that gave it that name so i decided to use it i, I like quirky quirky names so oh, yeah. yeah well i know you only to be a vagina yes right so i just want yes. to make sure for those of yes. you who don't know the lingo let's get with it ladies <laughs> and men if you're listening <laughs> yoni okay all right good and then um i just made some notes because i was just like wow this is all great and then the meditation. So do you do you meditate at a certain time of day or for a certain amount of time? Do you do it together, individually? Tell me more. Tell me more. So, to be honest, with this journey, that should be personal. Yeah. Okay. So you do, so that's by itself. What we do as, um, as a collective, we do it first thing in the morning. Really, you're supposed to meditate between four and six in the morning because that's when everything is you know up there your pineal gland is at its strongest you know and then you can connect better um so yeah that's the first thing we do and then we'll we'll journal we'll write we'll write down what's came to mind and then we will share it with the group you know because that's all part of healing talking obviously helps you to heal so that's that's how we do it yeah so when this is done and i want to join the next one um how does that work is it something that you're paying for is it something free is it something that basic so basically um i used to do all my fasts my detoxes for free now what i do is you have to purchase something from coco rust that's going to benefit your journey that's Thank all you. i ask so it's not yeah. yes okay in a way it's benefiting me but it's benefiting you more you it know so, yeah so more. Yeah. I, I don't really like taking payment for that because I'm already selling stuff. So I don't really want to sell my knowledge as well. It, it doesn't yeah. seem right with me. It is a win-win situation, right? I mean, yeah. you've got nothing to lose when they put That's your right. Help That's you right. Anyway. And if nothing yeah. else, it's an opportunity to sample what you're offering. Exactly. What your needs are. So I, yeah. I think it's fabulous. Go with it, girl. Go with it. I love it. I love it. So let me ask you a question. I've got so many questions written here. You wouldn't believe That's it. That's fine. So, um, one of the questions I wanted to ask you is, what on average is the most common, um, I'm going to use the word complaint, but I don't even know if it's really complaint, but what's the, the, the reason that most people come to you on average? On average, I'm sure they come to you for everything, but what's yeah. sort of the most popular maybe? Th the say? most popular problem, again, is womb health. Anything to do with womb, whether it's polycystic ovaries, endometriosis, menopause, um, what else is there? Um, fibroids, heavy bleeding, those sorts of things. That, those, that is my, And to be honest, it's really crazy because... That's that's what I'm really really passionate about because I myself um, suffer from endometriosis, you know. So and I'm trying to sort that problem out. I mean, um, since my since becoming plant based, since I've changed my whole lifestyle, those symptoms have gone well well down, you know. So I'm I'm winning. I'm winning. <laughs> I'm winning. Awesome. So I'm glad you're bringing this bring this up about being plant based because yes. Yeah. I love eating fish, chicken, not so much meat, but fish and chicken. I do love yeah. a bit of that. But it's not about quantity for me. It's I don't know if it's psychological that it has to be on my plate. But even if you just did this with a bit of chicken on something, I'm good. It's just, mm. It always feels like something's missing. So what is it about the meat? Let's call it meat when we're talking about fish. Yeah, that, yeah I call every, all of it meat whether it's dairy, fish, or whatever, so. Right. So what is it that that when you remove it makes things better? What's Is it what's in the animal? Is it Can you, can you embellish a bit more on that? 
what are you asking what's so wrong about eating meat or yeah yeah so basically meat um when you've consumed consuming meat or dairy mm. um it builds up mucus yeah mm. um so the stuff that you blow out of your nose your body gets filled with that then what happens after that is your body gets thrown off homeostasis which means your body no longer works to its optimum then we become acidic when our bodies are meant to be alkaline no illness no disease can live in an alkaline state and then we become mineral deficient you know so and, and on top of it the the animals are pumped up with hormones yeah mm. they are full of parasites that we're intaking and our bodies are now filled with parasites if you're not having a bowel movement after each and every um after each and every meal that means you are filled with parasites. It's that simple. If you've got an illness or disease, you have parasites, you have mucus. Mm -hmm. Whether you've got menopause, you've got parasites and you have mucus. You know, you remove those, you remove those things and, um, you know, your, your situation will get better. Also, meat also can um, help, ugh, sorry, meat makes us carry heavy metals within our system. Mm -hmm. It's also... Mm -hmm. um, Oh God, I've lost my train of thought. Ah! Okay. It was just about having all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I could just talk all day about that situation. So. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> but um, tell us a little bit about what the alkaline state means, because again, I'm, I'm making an assumption that not everybody will know what we're talking about. I'm yeah. really familiar, but some of us may not be. So we're talking about pH balance. We're talking about acid, acidity versus alkaline. So could you correct that down? Please. So, so basically, um, to have an to be to be alkaline, you cannot eat meat, you cannot eat dairy, even down to the um, vegetables. There's a lot of hybrids out out there. Um, mm. We eat a lot of hybrids. The, the planet is full of them now, which is man-made vegetables. If it's not in its natural state, if it hasn't grown in its natural state, it's a hybrid and can affect your health. Now, the, the natural occurring um, vegetables, herbs, and all sorts of things that are on the earth, that's what makes your body um, alkaline. Although you do need a little bit of acidity because if you become too alkaline, it can make it unwell as well. So you do need that balance at the same time. Yeah. What would one eat or drink to give you that balance? Okay, so there's um, there's a variety of different herbs, a lot of water, there'll be juicing, and that's juicing um, juicing alkaline fruits, um, things, things such as key limes, not the, the, the pumped up GMO limes that we see in the supermarket and in the markets. Um, what else is there? Oh, God, like kale, those sorts of dark leafy greens, those mm -hmm. are um, more alkaline to your system. Um, alkaline and we you said we can add a little acidity what would you we can add a little acidity like you yeah. see the, the acidic fruits those mm. are brilliant because uh, even though they do when they do hit your system they do turn alkaline they still got as acid in it you know so there you go okay. yeah can you give us an example of a fruit that would be acidic would that be a citrus for example citrus fruits yeah so like key limes grapefruit those sorts of things now le lemon is a hybrid Key lime is a seed, um, um, sorry, key lime is natural occurring. Yeah. I don't think I know what it looks like. What does a key lime look like? The re oh, it's a shame I haven't got any here. The really, really small, you, you, you'd be like, that's a lime. Oh, they look hard. <laughs> they're little, like, yeah, and they're, they're really light green, but they're very, very hard to get. Very hard to get. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's really a learning. I love that. I love that. Um, and then heavy metals. Yeah. You know, I use um, doTERRA essential oils and they talk a lot about heavy metals and, and they have certain products that they offer to help cleanse you of that. So, um, again, for those who may not know what that means, how would one have, what would you be doing or eating to have heavy metals in your body? Again, you'd reduce some meat and dairy. Mm -hmm. um, the products that you use on your skin. Now, we've got to remember that our skin is our largest organ, so we have to be careful what we put on it. Those um, roll-ons, you know, those um, creams that we buy from the supermarkets, um, th those can fill your body with heavy metals. Um, the water, the, the tap water is not good either. So yeah. that would fill your body with heavy metal as well. So and 
Go ahead, sorry, please. Oh no, and I was gonna say the things that you can take to reduce the effect of these heavy metals are things like bentonite clay, any sort of clay, any sort of chalks that are food grade, if you eat those, the, the activated charcoal, um, heavy metals attach to that and get removed out of your system. So, and yeah. there's many, there's like I say, there's like 700,000 to 800,000 medicinal plants on this earth that you can be taking. It, it's vast, it's really vast. Wow, okay, okay. So I'm just gonna come back to you. Um, I've got a couple of questions from the audience, but there's one thing I wanted to ask you that I miss and it's really important. Why or what made you decide to be a herbalist? Okay, wow, that is a that is a story, right? First <laughs> of all, um, I started my period when I was eleven years old. Mm -hmm. I went to moved in with my dad um, at thirteen. At that time, my periods became very, very, very painful. I can still see myself in the playground. I was thinking about it this morning, actually. Um, I can see myself in the playground at school practically screaming in my in pain my friends are trying to comfort me you know and I went through that for many years many years up till four years ago actually um mm. at the time when my partner was alive um he sent me to do a private scan to see what's going on and I, I got diagnosed with endometriosis I thought my life was over you know no children what am I gonna do um let me rewind back, rewind back. When I was 18 years old, I moved back in with a family member. She doesn't want me to mention her name, by the way. But um, I moved in with a family member at 18. And at the t because my dad was such a tyrant, you know, I was very depressed. I was really, really big. I was like 18 stone. And she said, you know what, we're going to the gym. So I started going to the gym, started losing weight. Now, this family member was vegan. And she cooked me this meal, and this meal was amazing. I was like, how can veg taste so good? Because I was a person, I love my chicken, I love my fish, you know? Mm -hmm. And from there, you know, I, I started to go off meat a bit. And then we, I was living in Leicester, and um, there was some people from Greenpeace, and mm -hmm. um, they was talking about the effects of eating meat, and I read it. And actually, I was on the way to KFC. <laughs> I never went. And I never touched chicken again after that. Funny wow. enough. No. Then we started to go to the library and I come across this book um, by Queen Afua. I don't know if anyone's heard of her. But she's very famous in America. And um, that book was called Sacred Woman. Now, I read this book back to front. I wrote out the whole book. I lent the book so much until I um, um, bought the book from the library. And that was all to do with womb health and how to heal holistically yeah, yeah. Um, but to, to be honest I was still inconsistent with the herbs when I was 21 years old um, I became um, I could feel a lot of pain um, regardless of whether I was on my period or not found out that I had a seven centimeter cyst on my ovaries they said yeah. they wanted to do keyhole surgery I went really okay that's fine you're not going to be doing keyhole surgery on me so I started to do my research and started to take um, what was suggested. And I remember going back for my pre-op mm. and they flipped me upside down. They did all sorts of things. So I'm getting worried thinking, why are they doing this? And they said, you need to go home. Your sister's gone. I healed myself and my cyst. Um, so that was the first thing. And then again, I was still inconsistent with the herbs, still going through period pains. And then I met my partner. Now, to cut a long story short, um, in 2016, um, just moved in with my partner, got my house, was at university, um, studying um, for children's nursing, funny enough. And he started becoming ill, started to become ill. I then dropped out of uni due to um, other reasons and um, became a HCA, a healthcare assistant. He was getting, to be honest, my partner kept getting sick. He kept getting sick. I kept saying, let's go to the hospital. But me and him have always, not like the hospitals, we prefer to have natural remedies. And he was always taking this thing called black seed oil. So anyway, um, it got so bad that we 
took him to the hospital. They found water on his lungs. They drained half of it, sent him home with antibiotics um, and said, you know, when the antibiotics are finished and you're still feeling unwell, come back. Uh, three weeks after that, I came home one day and found it very surprising that he was sitting downstairs because I had been looking after him. I used to have to wipe his bottom. I used to have to wash him because it was getting really bad. And so we was downstairs. And to cut a long story short, um, he said, you know what, you need to take me back to the hospital. So I tried to run upstairs to go and get his clothes on. We didn't want to call the ambulance. We wanted to go to a different hospital because my local one hasn't got a very good reputation. He sat down on the chair and he toppled. So I, I pushed him back up. The next thing I know, he's dropped on the floor and he's dead. He died right in front of me in my kitchen. Yeah. Um, and he died of a rare type of cancer. Now I felt very, very down. I, I just didn't trust the NHS, you know, and then, um, to be honest, before that, sorry, before we died, something, I don't know, people can call me mad, but something kept telling me to give him coconut oil. And when I was talking to him, why don't you take this coconut oil? He said, um, you know, because he's from Jamaica, he knows those coconut oils that um, we sell and are not the greatest and not even real. Um, and that, that um, anyway, it was too late. You know, he had it a few times, but it was too late anyway. So then I went to Jamaica to bury him because he always said that he wants to be buried in his homeland. And I went to a place called Halfway Tree. Mm -hmm. And oh my God, the amount of herbalists that were there shouting out herbs for cancer, can that it was like it was just ringing in my brain because that's what my partner died of. He type, died of a rare type of cancer that the hospital didn't pick up. And I just burst into tears. But the more I, was I started talking to these herbalists, and because I've always been interested in herbals anyway, I said, you know what? I'm gonna start making coconut oil and infuse it with other ingredients to help cancer patients. So that's what I did. I set up my Instagram page. I, did, I, I, um, I was very broke at the time. I bought 10 coconuts just to see if I could make it. And when I saw the coconut oil forming, I was like, oh my God, it was the most exciting thing. Yes, I'm sad, I don't care. But, but that was joy for me. <laughs> yeah, no, how then, I started, then I started infusing it with ingredients like moringa, turmeric, all sorts of things. And then after that, People started coming to me, but for different health issues, nothing to do with cancer now. It was all sorts of different health issues and things I've never even heard of before. And I'm like, wow. But then at that, when those people were coming to me, answers were coming to me as well to, for what to give them. And yeah. it worked. And I'm like, wow. And as I told you, my partner's favorite product was something called black seed oil. Now, this black seed mm -hmm. oil is known to treat everything apart from death. Yeah, but mm -hmm. then I found out the, the black seed oils that he was um, using weren't pure. Great, mm, they weren't pure. So I decided to make it, and then that became my biggest seller. And I'm like, wow. And then I went on to other oils, and then I went on to um, importing herbs from Jamaica. Then I went on to hair care, skin care. It just grew. So I, my business started from 10 coconuts, <laughs> to be honest. I love it. And, and I've, got, I've got now, what, 35 products that I make by myself? So, yeah. Fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. Know, you. That's amazing. And how long have you been in business, so to speak? Um, it has been about four years and about five months now. So, Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, so, and again, I'm self-employed. I'm I'm doing this full time. Yay! You go, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Loving it. <laughs> well, as I said, for those of you that joined a bit later, um, Coco was introduced to me by somebody that had used her products and used her services, and, and there's her website. Please take it down. But then somebody else mentioned it to me, and somebody else mentioned it, to me, and it was maybe five people. I thought, well, you know, if five people think she's great, then we've got to have her on the show. <laughs> So um, what we're hearing is great. So before I go forward, because I, I have my own questions and I won't be selfish, but the audience has asked a few really good questions here. So I want to bring some of them up. So one of the first ones was, can you please explain about the yoga and the main things that we need to do to succeed? Uh, I assume she's doing yoga or... I think she's talking about in the beginning when you were talking about 
um, your womb wellness that you do yoga as part of it? Yes. So, no, that's because, what you're making about that part. Right. Basically, we, we have to work on things holistically. Okay. If, um, you know, it's not just about diet, it's about your mindset. Your mindset is very important, you know. that Your mind is the biggest medicine ever. It's the most powerful mm -hmm. medicine, you know. Um, the yoga now balances mind, body, and spirit. It balances mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. It can also help you with particular health issues. It can bring your hormones back into balance. Yoga is very, very important. And to succeed is just to remain consistent in all that you're doing. There is, there is no, um, you know, there's no Einstein answer. It's just to mm -hmm. remain consistent. If you're gonna, um, if you're gonna change your diet, do the yoga as well. Make sure you're drinking water. Uh, make sure you're saying positive affirmations daily. Mm -hmm. That will sink, sink into your subconscious mind and your mind starts to believe it then your body starts to believe it so the answer is just to remain consistent and you will succeed succeed in anything and also um we're going to come back to jen's question i wanted to just ask you about the yoga do you recommend a particular type of yoga or are you only doing specific yoga movement? i prefer to be honest my um i prefer kinetic yoga because mm. to me yeah um the kinetic yoga Kometic yoga is the is um, the original yoga. Then that's where it came from, from ancient Egypt. Um, yes, India um, and Indians do it, but Kometic. Well, I like to I like to go to the original source, basically. Yeah. So how does that differ from what we consider mainstream yoga now? How how does that differ? Is it is it's, it less movement, more? Movement? No, no, it's it's the same sorts of movements, but we call those movements something different to the mainstream movements. You know, um, we're connecting to our ancestry, then our personal ancestry when we do that. So that's why it's different. Wow, yeah. that's really great. Okay, wow, so many great questions. So um, I think Jen had another question. Producer. So, Jen Roberts wanted to know what is the best thing to use to be able to steam yoni herbs. <laughs> <laughs> yoni herbs. <laughs> you closer to the camera, just a bit closer. What's it called? Yoni oh, herbs. Yoni. Oh, there you go. Yoni herbs. So, what what what's in there? Can you tell us? Or is it a secret? Oh no, no. I've, I've got the ingredients on there. There's lavender, rose, red raspberry leaf, yarrow, dog blood. Not the blood of a dog, it's a herb from the womb, okay? Everybody asks me, dog blood? Um, <laughs> Vervain, sage, rosemary, mother, mother water, mugwort. Now, I've um, specially designed this, and this does work. This has worked for so many females, even myself. You know, um, it gives, a, gives your womb um, medicinal, sorry, it provides medicine to the womb naturally, it decreases period pains. It helps your hormones to balance. It cleans out the whole womb area, the cervix, the uterus, the, the, the ovaries, everything. If you are struggling with infertility, this is the, this is the stuff here. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's a powerful statement there. It's That's powerful. Great... It's very powerful. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, next question. We've got a lot of questions, so let's bring them on. So can you recommend any books to read or videos? So one was Definite, the one Definitely Queen of Fewer, um, Sacred Woman. The one that we are working from is um, Overcoming an Angry Vagina. That's a very, very good book as well. So it's a bit dirty. It's been in my bag a million times. Um, these two books, if you want to learn about um, womb health, are absolutely amazing, amazing. I'm sure... Um, She's even on Instagram as well, and she does a lot of videos on YouTube, I'm sure. So, yeah, just she she just knows everything. Like, she, she's a guru. She's a womb guru. You know, I've learned so much from her. But Queen Afua. Can you spell that? Yeah, so it's Queen and then A-F-U-A. Okay. All right. And what I'll do is afterwards I'll post it in the group and, you know, other areas so people can find it. Thank you. There's so also, um, sorry, there's also um, people like um, Dr. Sebi, yes, Lalila O Africa. He's a very good herbalist as well. He obviously doesn't talk about womb health, but he can teach you a lot about um, herbs and how to take them and when to take them. So he's good too. Yeah. Okay. Next question. 
how would you know symptoms that your body, you know, know about the symptoms that your body is full of heavy metals? That's a really interesting question. Rashes, headaches, nausea, um, feel, just feeling unwell, um, feeling run down. If you're not going to the toilet enough, as I said, you need to be having a bowel movement after each and every meal. Um, yeah, lethargic, all the, you know, just generally feeling unwell. Yeah. Yeah. But definitely rashes, headaches and things like that. That's a, a big indication, big indication. Wow. Okay. That's a good one. Because I think a lot of people suffer from headaches and they think... And migraines and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 So that's really good to know. Okay. Let's see what other questions we have here. So what if someone's been diagnosed with human papillomavirus? In women can you only steam help with that it definitely can but also you must and you and it, i stress on it you must change your diet you must be careful what you put on your skin everything must be natural natural yeah okay that's yeah. really good to know all right and here's the website for those who want to know more about queen afwas yeah she's lovely she's great okay. <laughs> thank you for sharing that that's fantastic do you have any more questions at the moment? Please keep them coming, guys. Please keep them coming because they're, they're all great and they're all helpful. So what, what, how do you do it? Do is that the Yoni Steam? Is that the Yoni Steam? Let's assume it is. And then yeah, it, yeah, I'm sure it is. So basically, you'd get like a um, teaspoon of the herb. You put it into a pot. You add non-tap water. You never touch tap water, whether you're cooking um or even in the kettle for hot water so you use non-tap water you boil it up simmer for 10 minutes then um you can put it into a bucket or what i use is a yoni steam you can get them from ebay they're like 17.99 16.99 which just fits into your toilet then you'll sit, stoop over it or sit on the yoni um, seat um i know a few people use a commode as well and then they just um, get the towel, wrap it around them and allow the steam to escape into your vaginal area. Once you feel the steam end, you can either add more hot water or just discard it. It's up to you. A lot of females as well like to make it like a very joyous experience by putting candles around and, you know, playing uh, meditative music. It, it's, it's beautiful. It really is. And once you finish, the way you feel is absolutely amazing. Like you're just ready for the day. You know, so wow. And yeah. how long do you steam for? How long? I was just about to um touch on that. You're supposed to do it the first day after you um finish bleeding, after you finish menstruate menstruating. Yeah. And if you and if you don't have your period, when would you do that? You just do it like once a month anyway. Yeah. Okay, once a month. That's great. Taking my notes. <laughs> so when I order my products. What do you recommend for gut health? This is a great gut question. Gut health. Um, again, definitely removing completely dairy from your diet, you know, um, increasing on your water, increasing on your herbals, increasing on your chlorophyll, getting your chlorophyll into your system, um, taking parasite cleanses that helps to clean out the gut. Um, I know some people use like, um, is it called psyllium husks and things like that? Mm -hmm. Clays are very good for your gut health as well. Um, and an array of herbs. Oh, another thing that's very good for um, gut health is sea moss. Sea moss is amazing for gut health. Yeah, yeah sea moss seems to be the new, you know. Oh, it's, a, it's a big thing. thing. I mean, I was selling it before it got popular. And as soon as Dr. Sebi died, oh, my God, it's just been crazy. Really? <laughs> crazy, yeah. Okay. I know my family's from Jamaica, so I grew up, you know, they used to make it in drinks and everything. So... I know a lot about it. I don't necessarily personally drink it anymore because I just don't. But, you know, everyone's yeah. talking about it, so that's good to know. Sorry, there was another question that popped up. Um, can you bring that? Yeah. So it's a comment. Juanita saying, so true, Sacred Yoni Garden has good hers as well. Oh, yeah. And you know what's so beautiful as well? I've got to admit that there is so many different herbalists out there now that's pr providing all of these beautiful products you know i can't do all the work myself i need help <laughs> so it's lovely yeah. to see that so many people are doing it now it's that's really amazing it's lovely yeah. that you're saying that that's great that's very um selfless of you and giving yeah yeah i mean i i've helped 
herbalists get on this journey uh, well up and coming herbalists get on the journey as well so yeah wonderful we're doing god's works <laughs> so we're gonna get to menopause but one of the things thank uh, you yeah, we saw that that's great yeah. um one of the things i wanted to ask you about which i think is is goes hand in hand with the menopause so last week we talked about more of the the maybe the symptoms, but some of the things that you'll see, like hair growing, gaining weight, um, skin dry, vaginal dryness, all these kind of things. But what about emotional complaints? Do, do people come to you and talk about how it makes them feel? Because one of the things I think about when I talk to even my clients and friends about menopause is there's a sense of and we touched on it last week of grief, of losing our youth, you know, not having our period, oh. not being able to have children. Um, and especially if it happens earlier, I went into menopause at 36. So that's very unusual. I know someone who did that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was diagnosed with premature ovarian failure. Oh, wow. So, you know, it was very shocking. It was very yeah. traumatic. Of course. I, I wanted to have a family, but I couldn't. My yeah those things but you know it didn't work from an emotional perspective i wish there was somebody like you now when i first started losing my periods i just wanted to mention this because it's quite important even though it's quite personal it's important i'd gone to see a fabulous um i lived in the states for many years i lived in new york for 30 oh, years okay. and so i used to go to this fabulous um african-american uh herbalist and his name skips me but i'll find out his name because he's been doing it for a long time and we're now talking about 20 years ago 25 years ago i was going to him and he kept saying to me i don't think you're going into menopause i i believe you have a thyroid problem okay so that was interesting because nobody had ever suggested that now he gave me some meds and I broke out in a rash and I had a reaction and I got really scared. And so I didn't go back for a while. And he kept saying, oh, no, 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 you have to carry it down. Should have carried on. But, you know, it was in a time when people like him didn't really exist. So you started wondering, oh, is he straight? Is there something weird? Yeah. About <laughs> but my period did come back a little bit when I went back to trying to do it. But I think at the point when I went back and started doing something, I was over that, that window. Yeah. So from an emotional perspective, I was, you know, devastated, obviously, really sad. I was at an age where most of my friends were having children or mm. just had children. Um, if somebody, if, if, if my old Michelle came to you now, not my old, my younger self came to you now saying, you know, I know I have all these issues and I know that I no longer can have children, but emotionally, what can I take to cope with that? Would you have any suggestions? Would there be anything that you prescribe, maybe? Yeah, so um, for emotional issues, I, I would have told you straight away to go on a detox, and I possibly would have done that detox with you because I'm that sort of person. Um, and then I would get you on things like hemp seed oil, which is um, very good for emotions. It's very good for um, anything to do with the brain. You know, we can it, it lightens your mood. And then there's things like um, maca. Don't know if you've heard of maca. Maca helps to balance the hormones because okay. that's, that's the emotional part as well. It's your hormones being off off balance. You know mm -hmm. things like gutta cola, ginkgo biloba, mm -hmm. um, sea moss. See this this super this it's word coming, it's coming up. It's going to keep coming up. But sea moss is absolutely amazing for everything. So yeah, mm -hmm. those are the sorts of things I would have told you to do definitely and not only that as we said we're dealing with the holistic side so i'd be telling you to listen to positive affirmations daily i'd be telling you to do mirror work i'd be telling you to meditate you know those are the things those are your doctors basically i'll be telling you to go out in nature embrace it you know Me. Get, Me. take your shoes and socks off and go and walk in some grass amongst some trees the feeling is amazing. Absolutely, I'm, I'm just a natural woman. I'm a nature, so yeah, I love it. And we're talking about grounding, and we we've talked about it on the show quite a bit before. So yeah. it's really great stuff. Um, you know, we, we've we've been catching up for 45 minutes already. Oh so wow! This is <laughs> okay, 
Um, and we're not quite there at the end, but I wanted to ask you what the main show was about, which is menopause. Menopause. And so what would you what would you recommend for those of us that are in the three stages? So perimenopause, maybe in menopause and, and or fully fledged menopause, and then those are post menopause, if I've got that right, right? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah, so um I that 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 continuum of time where, where our bodies are changing. That's what right. But the, the thing is, we're not supposed to be going through menopause. You know, mm. menopause is basically your hormones um, decreasing it, they're off balance. You bring them back into balance, there is no menopause. I have helped three people now, three people reverse their menopause. One was 36 years old. Um, she was told that she might have to go on HRT. She has to get some tests to see if she's got, got, got menopause. And she was asking me, Coco, what do I do? I said, don't take the HRT just yet. Go and, for, go and get diagnosed first, because obviously I can't diagnose anybody, um, and then come back to me. She came back to me and said, I've got menopause. I said, okay, what do you want to do? Obviously, I've got it. I said, do you want the HRT? Would you like to try my stuff? She said, I'm going gonna, gonna to try yours. So I got her on a, um, a, a wound pack. I used to call it the wound pack then, but it's now the panache pack. Um, and she took that for about two, three months. The vaginal dryness went, the, the, the sweats went. She used to get skin, ac um, sorry, chest acne. That went. Everything just started to reverse. She was even starting to slightly get back her period. But that can, after a little while, it completely stopped. And then, but um, after that, sorry, she doesn't suffer from any of those symptoms. The only thing that could indicate that she's going through menopause is that she no longer has a period. That's it. So what you're yeah. saying is when you, we talk about going through menopause, it's not, it shouldn't be about the stop in the, it shouldn't be about the symptoms. It should just naturally stop when it's ready to stop. Correct? Is that what you're saying? No, we're not supposed to go through menopause. So you're saying that we should have a period? We should, we, yeah. We, okay the family member who doesn't want me to say her name don't know why but um, <laughs> she's in her late 50s yeah. because i learned so much from her obviously um she drinks a lot of herbs she she um has a very good diet now and again she'll dibble dabble in meat but it's not very often she still has a period she's never been through menopause do you see where i'm coming from it's I mean something your hormones are not meant to go off balance. <laughs> it's not meant to be. Yeah. Pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, now that I don't have it, I don't know if I'd ever want it back. No, maybe of course you don't. I want it back to have a baby, maybe, but yeah. not, not for the sake of having it. No. Yeah. And that was a question that the, um, the ladies that I've helped, oh, I know you're saying that um, I could reverse it, but will my periods come back? And I told them no. That just stops. And to be honest, we're not even meant to have a period. That's the thing. Oh, my God. That's a whole other show. <laughs> show. We can't even get into that. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that again. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good one. But yeah. I've got some questions here that I must ask you, so I don't want to forget. Um, do you have any advice for our teenage daughters and teenage boys about menopause and sexual health? Menopause? Mm -hmm. For teen... To, to, now, that's that's a good question. Now, when it comes to, um, I'm not too sure about the teenage boys thing, but the girls, definitely, what I would tell, I always say this to parents, start them young. Get them on their herbals. Um, start changing their diet from now. You know, don't wait because... What happens is when we are feeding our children on all this meat and dairy and gluten and pop and sweets and fast food, what's happening is, is that mucus is just building up, building up, building up, building up, building up. You know, they're, they're quite young. So, you know, our bodies protect us, of course, you know, and our bodies will try and protect us as much as we can. And when we're young, we get away with certain things. When you start getting older and older and older, you always hear, oh, I've got high blood pressure. Oh, I've got this. Oh, I've got that. Where did that come from? It's it's out of the blue. Nothing is out of the blue. It starts it, it starts practically from the minute of conception. You know, if mum and dad are eating those sorts of foods, you know, babies growing in womb, they're intaking that food. Then they get weaned onto either breast milk or um, 
no, sorry, they, they get fed breast milk or cow's milk, which is very detrimental to your health. And then we get weaned on to these normal meaty foods. So it starts on a minute of conception. So what I would suggest that everyone does is try and start their children young. Even if you're going to say, you know what, we're not going to eat meat for like three, four days a week. Brilliant. You, you, you're putting less burden on your body. Once you've started doing that and you're taking your herbals regular and whatsoever, by the time you're reaching, what's the um, age for menopause? 45 to 55? By yeah. the time you're reaching yeah. those ages, you're not going to get it. You know? Mm -hmm. You're not going to have you're not going to have these heavy bleeding and heavy periods that are not normal. Mm -hmm. um, so that's it. That's my advice. And the same with the boys as well. Great. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, all of this needs to be in a book. So that's what, yes. <laughs> I'm at, at the moment I am when I get time, I'm writing bits and pieces. Basically, oh. I just want to put all my knowledge into one book because it's so it's so much in here, you yes. know. And sometimes I, I don't know how to express it or get it out. So mm -hmm. I thought, you know what, the best way to do it, and it was suggested to me just two weeks ago at an event, you need to get all this knowledge into a book. So that's what I'm about to do. Yeah. Phenomenal, phenomenal. Well, all that knowledge has been really spread beautifully amongst us, so we're not complaining. <laughs> I still have a few more questions for That's you. That's fine. Um, Eva wants to know, how long would you use CMOS for if you're premenopausal? Keep taking it, keep taking it. Now, CMOS is a... Um, is a... Would you use it if you're perimenopausal? So I, I guess it's the same. Yeah, thing. yeah, of course. That's a great thing to use um, if you're perimenopausal. And the greatest thing about CMOS, unless you've got thyroid issues, you can use that daily, daily, daily. It, you can have as much as you like. It's it's not an issue. It's not a problem. You know, um, I wouldn't just take the CMOS. I'd take other products with it as well. Like I've got my panache pack. You don't even have to get it from me. There's loads of people that sell, um, you know, um, herbs for females, you know. So mm -hmm. you, I'll get you on a parasite cleanse, the yoni steam, the sea moss, the herbs. Another um, great product, again, um, is black seed oil. Black seed oil is amazing for menopause. Amazing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. What about the – oh, here's another one. Any advice – for menstrual migraine headaches any advice again it's just gonna i'm just gonna keep repeating myself over and over again basically because it's the same with the what, what i'm suggesting is how you heal every every sort of um health issue so um sorry what was the question again i've just gone off on a tangent yeah it's all right uh, any advice for menstrual migraine or headaches right so again change that diet definitely you know what? I understand that the whole world is basically, um, apart from vegans, of course, but we didn't start off as vegans. We had to learn that way. We are all addicted to meat. Meat is the biggest drug in the world. Yeah. Um, so why can't I'm not going to sit here and say you need you need to come off meat now. And that's why you heard me say, even if you take three to four days away from eating it, you're taking a big burden off your body. Yeah, because what's causing the heavy bleeding and the uh, migraines is the meat eating, the dairy eating. Not just that, um, there's stress factors as well. Um, obviously, we, everybody goes through stress. Um, yeah. It's uh, the products that we're using on our skin and stuff like that. So the, the biggest thing is to change your diet. Get onto your positive affirmations. Do your meditations um, and take herbal supplements, definitely. Herbs is the key to, to life, the way I see it. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, I'm just trying to see if I had any more. I've got so many questions. Oh, let's see, because we're getting down to our last question. Okay. I'm going to wrap it up with one last question. Um, and I, I think this was so good. We may have to have you come back. See okay, no thing. problem. <laughs> There's, more. There's more to be asked. But in terms of you know, the, the pandemic that we're going through right now. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people, you know, some people have taken the vaccine, some people haven't. But in general, what would you say as a herbalist, what would be the best protection or alternative medicine they could use to support their immune system during this time? Right. So um, 
there's stuff like black seed oil. That's um, number one for me. Diamaceous earth. Um, that's sort of a clay that removes heavy metals from your system. Um, bentonite clay, food grade. I must stress on that because there's one that you can't um, obviously ingest. Um, there's stuff like moringa, sarsaparilla, um, vervain, guinea hen. All of these, um, everything that I'm explaining are herbs. These are herbs from Jamaica. Mm. Um, the, 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 obviously, the stuff that you use on your skin must be natural. You can even bathe in bentonite clay as well. That would definitely help. Um, taking things like elderberry. Elderberry is amazing. That Anywhere that mucus is, elderberry finds it and gets rid of it. You know, drinking a lot of juices, a lot of green juices, a lot of beetroot. So all of these things will definitely, definitely help. Cutting down on meat and dairy, that's just number one. Yeah. Okay. So you've given us so much information here. If, if the, everyone who's watching tonight wants to purchase something from you, where's the best place to, to, to do this? Do they need to come and see you and have a consultation? Do you do it over Zoom? How does it work? Right. My consultations, um, they, they can be either via phone or in store. I, um, I've got a shop in Handsworth. I've also got a website, cocoras.com. And for the next three days, for all the listeners, I'm actually giving a 15% off from tomorrow. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> the, um, the coupon code will be called um, COCO15 if you want to do that. If you want to come into store um, over the next um, few days, you can also get 15% as well. Fantastic. Yeah. So just to be clear, they can either phone you, which can they find your phone number on your website? Um, I can't find my phone number on website, but if you're on Instagram and you DM me, I can then we can then discuss that. Okay, and I'm just going to add to that, if anyone doesn't have access to Instagram or any of these things, but you're here, um, put a message in my group or reach out to me and I'll, I'll make sure we connect you with Coco. Um, and Coco, if they come in store, you're in Handsworth, which is in Birmingham, for those of you that don't live in the Midlands. Yeah, so, um, I also do send out as well, well, obviously, because I've got a website, I do send out as well, so that's fine. And... Um, how long does it take to get an appointment? Are you backed up? Oh, no, no, not really. Um, normally, I, I do prefer to do my consultations either Sunday or Monday because those are my quietest days. Okay. I mean, if somebody okay. is really desperate, I do squeeze them in as well, if okay. it's after that. That's amazing. I mean, I, I, I don't know what else to say. We've got so much information here. We've got the books. We've got all the, the herbs that you've mentioned. We've talked about your womb wellness um, group that I would love to be in on your on up to day 25 right now. But you're day 25, and I'm about to enter another four ladies. We've got nine at the moment. So, okay. yeah. So, for those of us that want to join, because I'm sure a few of us do. Yeah. Can we just email you about that? Or? Yeah. Um, just to let you know as well, the next one starts the 5th of October. Again, yeah. the only thing I ask is that you buy something. That's going to benefit your womb. Yes. Fantastic. Yeah, that's okay. 5th of August, October, excuse me. 5th of, yes, 5th of October, which is next week. All right. I'll put that. Oh, that's, yeah, it is. Yeah, next Wednesday. Yeah. I, I have been advertising it for a while. <laughs> you know oh, what? Thank you. You have been an amazing guest. Really, really informative. I always feel like I know it all, but I definitely learned a lot today. Lovely. And um, I, I don't know where to begin, but I know I'm going to be ordering my Yoni steam. Got to check that out. If nothing else, I think it might feel good. But yeah, we won't go oh, gonna, Listen, you will feel like a new woman, lady. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe feel like a natural woman. Oh, definitely, definitely. Coco, thank you so, so You're much. most welcome. I wish it wasn't ending now, to, after I was all nervous. <laughs> well, absolutely no reason at all. But that's good, because now you can come back again and tell us more. Oh, definitely. And I've got so much more to tell you, so hurry up and have me back. <laughs> okay, I would love to. I'd love you. Thank you so much. I'm going to ask you to just step into the green room, and I'll connect with you again. Don't okay. worry, so we'll take care of that for you. Thank and you. thanks again. For those of you who missed it earlier, here's Coco's website. 
but I will also put it into the group as well if you've missed it. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. You've been really amazing. Look, one of the guests is saying, please come back, please come back. So we'll have to have you back on. But for those of you that missed it, this is on a replay. So please rewatch it. Um, and then, you know, you can hear all the details again. And if you're on YouTube and you've subscribed as you should, then you can pause it, write down what she's mentioning and then go back. So just remember this many ways for you to get her information but what an amazing guest she's uh, it was all true what they said and then some and then some so for those of you um that joined us tonight i'm so happy that you could join us next week we're going to be talking a little bit about mental health um so i'll let you know more about that later on the week but for tonight i'm gonna love you and leave you and as i always say stay connected well be connected be joyful and shine your light. Have a good night.